Finally, a Pixel Watch I would actually wear on a daily basis. Google just announced the Pixel Watch 3, which unlike its predecessors will now also come in a 45 mm version. And this has got me excited as it finally feels like a size I would actually wear because this 41 mm version always felt super small. And Google is taking more steps in the right direction with the Pixel Watch 3, introducing a few features that could make it compete with both good sports trackers like the Apple Watch on the one hand and good health trackers like the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap on the other. To start off with, one of the most or maybe the most important improvement that Google promises is improved heart rate tracking. Google claims up to 40% more accurate heart rate tracking during vigorous activities like hit, spinning and rowing. And this is purely due to improved algorithms as the sensors are the same as those on the Pixel Watch 2. And the older Pixel Watch 2 was already a good heart rate tracker based on my testing. Let me show you right here. Here I ranked many different devices from worst on the left to best on the top right based on their correlation with a reference device. So the correlation is along the horizontal axis and their rank is along the vertical axis. That basically means that the further to the top right the device is, the better it's performing. And as you can see, the Pixel Watch 2 marked in red right here is among some of the top performers. And this is for indoor cycling, so a relatively easy exercise. And here it's doing rather well. We can see that even better when we zoom in. And that zoomed in view is displayed right here. So these are just the watches with a correlation of 0.9 or higher, so some of the better performing watches. And as you can see, even amongst those, the Pixel Watch 2 was one of the better performers. It's doing about as well as some Huawei devices, only Apple watches are very clearly outperforming it. But this is for cycling indoors. Let's see how the Pixel Watch 2 did for cycling outdoors, which is quite a bit more tricky. And you can see that overview right here. Again, we want the watches to be as far to the top right as possible. And as you can see, again, the Pixel Watch is among some of the top performers. It's not the absolute best, which is still the Apple Watch, but on Android, it's really one of the best devices out there. So the Pixel Watch 3 is at least as good or potentially even better, like Google promises. That makes me quite excited to see those results. And also for running, the Pixel Watch 2 was among some of the top performers, as you can see right here. Now I tested fewer watches from running, but as you can see, it's again among some of the better watches out there. And the Pixel Watch 3 will be especially tailored towards running. So if it's also better at tracking my heart rate during running, that would be quite exciting. It might even be as good as Apple Watches, for instance. And one exercise where most watches struggle, which is weightlifting, for which you can see the overview right here, the Pixel Watch 2 is actually doing quite okay already. So it has a correlation of 0.9 with the reference for weightlifting, which is more or less the cutoff I take for using it or not using it for weightlifting when it comes to heart rate tracking. And again, if the Pixel Watch 3 proves to be at least as good or hopefully even better, that gives me a lot of hope for this new watch. Now, of course, it remains to be seen if my independent testing also sees improvements in the heart rate tracking, but stay tuned for that video. The Google team did show last year that firmware can make all the difference in terms of heart rate tracking, with the Fitbit Charge 6 performing much better than the Charge 5 without changing the heart rate sensor and relying purely on algorithms. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about Fitbit, Google bought Fitbit some time ago, so they're basically the same company now. Oh, and the heart rate monitor of the Pixel 3 can also be connected to fitness equipment for your gym workouts. Now let's move on to sleep tracking, something we test in detail on this channel, which I also do once I get my hand on a Pixel 3. Like always, the Pixel Watch 3 will also track your sleep stages, so deep sleep, light sleep, REM sleep, and awake time. Now this wasn't discussed in detail, but I suspect that for this they will use the same algorithm that Fitbit and Google have used for many years. And that algorithm has actually for a long time been one of the best out there. And you can see that in this overview right here. And this is based on purely scientific literature. So I went through a lot of scientific papers to get the data out and then plotted that in an overview. And again, the better the agreement with the reference device, the more to the top variety of devices. And in this case, most of the time that reference device was a PSG device. So the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. So in this overview, I didn't plot the results for Fitbit yet, but as you can see, some of the poor performing devices for sleep stage tracking are Garmin, Polar and Xiaomi, and some of the better performance are the Aura Ring 3 and the Apple Watch, and the Whoop Strap is somewhere in between. And if we now add different Fitbit models in green right here, which are likely using the same algorithm as the Google devices, we can see they are among some of the top performers. They're not the absolute best, so the Aura Ring 3 and Apple Watch, but they're pretty decent, and some of these are pretty old devices. Back in the day, I wore the Fitbit Charge 2 for several years, and this is really a pretty decent sleep stage tracker, especially for the time. In scientific literature, at the time at least when I made this overview, I couldn't find any results for different Google watches, at least not for healthy sleepers, but I did test them on myself. Let's take a look at those results. And those results are displayed right here. Again, the better the device, the more to the top right the device is. Now these were just tested on me, so it's a bit biased in that sense, and I use different reference devices. The devices marked in blue purple were tested against polysomnography, the gold standard in sleep stage tracking. Those not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, my standard reference, which I cannot use anymore because Dream went bankrupt. And those marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG device, a research-based EEG device, which like all the other references can also measure your brain waves. 
And as you can see, different Fitbit and Google devices can be found right here. We have the Pixel Watch 2 right here, for instance, but also the recent Fitbit Charge 6, the original Google Pixel Watch, and many other Fitbit products right here. So all of them, I suspect, are using the same sleep stage tracking algorithm. And I suspect that the new Pixel Watch 3 will use the exact same algorithm. So we'll also end up somewhere right here. It's not the absolute best algorithm out there. So at least on me, the Apple Watch does a lot better. Also, the Aura Ring is pretty good. The same goes for the H Sleep Pod 3 and the Nuko app called Sleep 2 now, I think. So all of these, at least on me, do a little bit better than the Google or Fitbit algorithm. But I think Google has a pretty solid sleep stage tracking algorithm. So why change that? But of course, we'll find out when I test it and get my hands on one. But where the main change comes from in terms of sleep tracking is in the way that the Pixel Watch 3 now presents your sleep and recovery in the app in a more actionable way. After before discussing that, I'm hoping that my diligent testing has earned a subscribe from you and also really helps me get access to devices sooner from manufacturers if you leave a like or a comment, but of course totally up to you. But back to the Pixel Watch 3, the Pixel Watch will now move more into the direction of for instance the Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap, which are known for presenting sleep recovery and training load in a way that's easy to understand and actionable for the user. The Pixel Watch 3 will keep a similar sleep score to what you're used to from Fitbit, but in addition at three new scores, an updated readiness score, a cardio load score, and a target load score. The idea is that you use these three scores together to plan your day, so your sleep and activities. The way it's supposed to work is as follows. When you wake up, you see a summary of your most important health and fitness metrics, your sleep quality, your readiness score, your progress towards your weekly exercise, and finally, something very similar to the Apple's Vitals app, you see if any of your health metrics deviate from your personal range. These are the metrics like your heart rate variability, breathing rate, and oxygen saturation. The new readiness score is now supposed to be more personalized to you and basically a summary of many of these metrics using your sleep patterns, resting heart rate and HRV. This score at least tries to measure your body state of recovery, trying to help you understand your body's response to load, exercise, and is particularly aimed at athletes and fitness enthusiasts who want to ensure they're not overtraining and basically giving their body enough time to recover. So if I translate that, I think it basically gives you a score of how recovered you are that day and how ready you are for exercise. In addition to balance your activity with your recovery, the Pixel Watch 3 introduces what it calls the target load feature. This basically provides a daily training range to aim for, considering your recovery and recent load. It's designed to help you improve your fitness and maintain it without overtraining, though of course we won't know yet how well that works. From what I understand, this isn't super customizable, which might be a problem for some of you in the long run, but we'll have to see once we actually use it. There is a setting somewhere that will determine if the app tries to optimize for improving your fitness or just maintaining your current level. Now, in order for you to make informed decisions about your workouts, the Pixel Watch also somehow needs to actively track your current load as you go about your day, and this is what Google calls cardio load. This tracks how hard you've been pushing it throughout the day, whether you're doing chores or actively running, and this is basically a score you're supposed to keep increasing until you hit your target load. From what I understand, the cardio load is somehow derived from the time you spent in different heart rate zones. Here you can see two extreme examples side by side. On the left is a day with a low readiness score, which leads to a low target load, which means that the aim that day is recovery and you reach that day's target by achieving a low cardio load because a high cardio load would impede recovery. On the right is a day with a high readiness score, which means that the target load for that day is set much higher and you would need to work out harder to reach that day's cardio load. So it's a very cool feature in principle, but I'm curious to see how it works out in practice and how customizable it will be if you feel it pushes you either too much or too little over the days. Before moving on to some other features, a few important notes on sleep tracking. First of all, the watch automatically detects when you fall asleep and turns off features to not disturb you during sleep and also to save on battery life. This auto bedtime mode theoretically should ensure you get the most accurate data without manual intervention. Second, though some things we'll discuss later are just available with Fitbit Premium. From what I understand at least, all the scores we discussed so far should be available without any sort of monthly subscription. Now delving a bit more into the workout features of this watch, Google has put a large focus on running with the Pixel Watch 3. There's a new Fitbit Run dashboard where you can plan your running workouts, track your runs and reflect on your progress. In the accompanying workout builder, you can create runs with set targets target paces, heart rates, and distances, and these will then be displayed clearly while you're running to keep you on track, and you get real-time wrist guidance via audio and haptic cues. Supposedly, the Pixel Watch 3 tracks your running form using advanced motion sensing and machine learning, providing detailed breakdowns of your cadence, stride length, and more. But let's see how that works out and also compare to the competition once I get my hands on one. The Pixel Watch 3 also comes
comes with AI powered daily run recommendations and personalized workout plans, which are based on your goals, performance and recovery. Now this is part of Fitbit Premium, so you don't get it for free. And I suspect this is likely most useful for people who are new to running. But on the other hand, you don't need premium to just plan to run yourself in the new dashboard app. And also the readiness, target and cardio load scores are available without a subscription. So there's a lot to be potentially excited about, but of course we'll be putting all those features to the test. And more importantly, we'll test if the underlying metrics the watch takes, like your heart rate, HRV and sleep stages are actually accurate. Because if those are bad, probably the whole system is useless. Now there are a few more important things you should know about this watch. First of all, as I mentioned in the beginning, there will be a 45mm version of the watch, which I'm quite happy about, but there's also still the 41mm version. There should be 16% less bezel on the 41mm version and a 40% larger screen on the 45mm version. The 45mm version weighs 37 grams without the bezel and the 41mm version is lighter at 31 grams. I suspect that most men that don't have a super tiny wrist will probably go for the 45mm version because this 41mm version looks quite small and I don't have that big a wrist. Now a few more specs to close off. The new Actua display is up to two times brighter than before and can reach up to 2000 nits at peak brightness. And what I really like personally is that it has a minimum brightness of just one nit for those low light situation. So you won't be bombarded with bright light at night which could disturb your sleep. Now if true the battery life is quite okay for this type of watch with the 45 mm model featuring a 420 milliamp hour battery offering up to 24 hours with the always on display and 36 hour with the battery saver mode and supposedly with the battery saver mode you have all the health and sports tracking features so that's quite cool the 41 mm version of course has a smaller battery at 306 milliamp hours but supposedly has similar performance now both models support fast charging via usb-c with 20 percent faster charging compared to the predecessor reaching 50 percent in about 20 28 minutes for the 45 and 24 minutes for the 41 mm versions. And when it comes to connectivity, the Pixel Watch 3 has 4G LTE, Bluetooth 5.3, Wi Fi, NFC, and ultra wideband. For GPS, it supports multiple satellite systems, including GPS, Galileo, and GLONASS, with additional support for these three satellite systems, but only in regions outside of the US. But of course, we'll be putting the GPS tracking to the test in my review video. For health and fitness tracking, the Pixel Watch 3 is equipped with a range of different sensors, including heart rate, SpO2, ECG, a 3-axis accelerometer, gyroscope, altimeter compass and a skin temperature sensor. It also features an electrical sensor to measure your skin conductance or CEDA for body response tracking. And finally, it has 5 atmospheres of water resistance and is IP68 rated for dust and water protection. Of course, this might degrade over time, so be a bit careful. The Pixel Watch 3 runs Wear OS 5.0 and is fully integrated into the Google ecosystem. So you can interact with your Nest cameras and doorbells, control Google TV, manage your Google phone cameras, screen and hold calls with Google Assistant and you can access Google Maps offline if you download different areas to your phone which is something I would actually use. It also supports Google Wallet for payments and in transit and in the box you get the Pixel Watch 3, an active band in both sizes and the USB-C fast charging cable. The 45mm version comes in three colors so matte black, polished silver and matte hazel while the 41mm version also adds a champagne gold option. Be aware though that the bands of the 41mm version will be a different size from the 45mm version so your old pixel bands will only be compatible with the new 41mm version and thanks to Desfit for pointing this out. Hello, Rob from A Few Days in the Future here. It's almost time for the video to go live, but I wanted to make sure that I got you the latest updates and Google just shared a few with me. First of all about cardio load, this is apparently based on something called training impulse, basically a measure of how hard your heart is at the work. But the important thing here is that higher heart rate range exponentially are weighted higher. So a really high heart rate counts really a lot more than a medium heart rate. And what's also important to know is that cardio load only focuses on periods where you're really active so it only accumulates during intensities at or above 30 percent of your heart rate reserve and the last thing i want to mention something about is target load now target load is apparently rooted in something called acute chronic workload ratio and more details in the description below but what you should know is you don't get this immediately you'll only start receiving a target load two weeks after wearing it full time so both day and night and after 28 days it's fully calibrated oh and google did just share this video showing off the target load and cardio load but i didn't want you to miss out on those nice little rock animations if you do decide to get a pixel watch 3 a whoop strap an aura ring an ac pod 4 an other device or anything at all on amazon for that matter even something as small as toilet paper want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below they do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount 
Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Pixel Watch 3, check out this complete testing of the older Pixel Watch 2, which you might be able to get at a bargain now, or this video on my top recommendations for sleep stage tracking. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.